Negroes who live in this rural area are convinced that someone deliberately burned down their church. Burned it because Negroes dared to hold voter registration classes here. Because of this rubble, some of the colored folk around here are scared. Scared as they have never been before. And they won't be back for any more voter registration classes. But others are not scared, or if they are, refuse to show it. And they are coming back, more determined than ever. Martin Luther King is among those who has vowed not to let the voter registration movement in Leesburg and the rest of South Georgia fade. Not, not much is known about this church burning at the moment, but one fact is, in the long run, it will help, not hinder, the voter registration drive. This is Dan Rather in Leesburg, Georgia. What am I doing here With another man's wife I'm shaking in fear But I'm having a time of my life I'm a fool To put my life in jeopardy But I can't help myself She makes sweet love to me the way I was brought up But I'm sure enough caught up In this chain of love Seem like it's just my love Treading in troubled water I've got to sink or swim I knew all the time this woman belonged to him Dealing with forbidden fruit Stealing from another guy But I can't help myself She's the only woman that I desire Oh, this ain't the way I was brought up But I'm sure enough caught up In this chain covered oak back there was a hanging tree during the time of the Civil War. They are now being told that someone deliberately burned their church. Burned it because Negroes dared to hold a voter registration class here. Well, I think my reaction, of course, is a reaction of every member of this city government and of the people of this community of outrage uh, that these type of things can be done or attempted to be done. And of course, one bomb did go off in our city this morning and one man injured. I think that this confirms our feeling uh, that this type of thing is un-American and that innocent people must be allowed to have peace in their homes. And I'm sure that every member of the city government feels that we are going to do what needs to be done to move this city forward. 350 pounds, Dan, up there over your head. All right, then. Well, 
Of course, I think the same thing that I thought about it. Anybody who would set a dynamite, uh, a bomb, any place, uh, is a fiend and has committed a dastardly, infamous act. And uh, it's just, uh, and we are indignant about it, and uh, the people of this state are indignant about it because we don't, uh, we don't believe in any such as this, and we're not used to these things here. They happen in many parts of the country, and that's no excuse for them happening. We feel a bad. As I said, I'm glad it's not, I'm glad it wasn't any worse. It's just bad enough. And then where are I'm telling you? You see all the damage. I know it's a lot of damage, that's right. All the damage. But the people of this state are against this damage. Watch your eyes. You might find one person out of three of them. Three and a half million people in the country, and I've got a lot of news that uh, I heard en route to Washington uh, about the uh, uh, three bombs that uh, uh, two that were found unexploded and the one that did explode. And uh, of course, I turned around to come back. I I'm very disturbed and distressed and dismayed about uh, this development. And I want to say this: that as a governor of this state, that uh, whoever uh, would set a bomb at any time, uh, anywhere, uh, regardless of what state it happens to be, uh, is a fiend. And this is a this is a, to set a bomb at the at the house in which the uh, little boy was injured, and it set one at the mayor's house, to set one at uh, a member of the city council's house, is an infamous, dastardly uh, action on the part of someone. Uh, who is not interested in anybody in this state or this country. They are just anti-American. And uh, I hope that we can uh, join with uh, all agencies of the government, including the local police. And uh, I want to say this, that many policemen have uh, risked their lives in the matter of aiding in the disarming of these uh, bombs uh, that have set the other day, including the demolition experts from the Army. And uh, they've done an excellent job, and uh, the local and state County police are going to cooperate with the FBI and everyone to see if we cannot come to some solution. I'm going to offer $5,000 reward uh, to add to the rewards already offered uh, to any information by anyone uh, uh, that can help us solve uh, these dastardly crimes. And I hope that people throughout this state will add to this reward till it gets to such an extent uh, that someone may come forward. And I would like to say that anybody who's listening or watching, that if you have any information or know anything, if you will come to the police, your identity will be kept secret. Uh, you will not be uh, uh, harmed in any manner. In fact, you will be protected. And uh, you live only one time. And if you want to do a good deed for your country and for your state and for the cause of humanity, you come forward. And, uh, and let the people know what you know about this. And uh, uh, I do hope that anybody who is in the hearing of my voice who knows anything about it will come forward. And we're going to do the best we can to solve uh, these, uh, uh, this, the, the, these infamous acts because whoever's doing it is not on anybody's side. They're against everybody in this state and in this nation, white and black. Do you think it's an organization involved in this? I have no idea who is doing it. I will say that in my judgment, those who are doing it are inspired and uh, uh, aided and abetted by those who do not like these United States. And I would say that anyone, uh, whoever he happens to be, who would uh, be involved at all is not for white or black citizens of this country or state. They are against everybody. And, uh, and as a governor of this state, whenever we can uh, locate and find out who's doing it, I can tell you they're going to get what's coming to them. Governor, governor can you, you just be a little us. more specific in that uh, designation of who you think it might be? Well, I don't, uh, of course, I don't know who it might be. I just say that whoever would do a thing of this sort is just against everybody. He's not for anybody in this country because anyone who would set a bomb at anyone's house, uh, uh, and of course we are not the only, uh, this is no defense to these bombs being set in Alabama. But you know, bombs have been set in many states of the Union. Bombings have been uh, uh, throughout the length and breadth of our history. 
In fact, I can think of one state that's had 65 bombings in one city. But that's no excuse for it in Alabama. And we don't say because you have them other places that that makes it right here. And I don't know exactly, of course, uh, what organization is doing it. I have, but I just know whoever's doing it doesn't love this country. Governor, you've just had a conference aboard your airplane with uh, both state and local law enforcement officers. That's correct. Is I there anything uh, at this time that can be said as I, to the investigation? I just want to congratulate the uh, state and uh, city and, and county uh, enforcement officials, uh, uh, the sheriff's department and the city uh, police. Uh, Mr. Bailey was here and Mr. Jamie Moore. And Mr. Wiggins, of course, was here. I want to congratulate all those and all agencies of law enforcement who are working on this matter and to say that when you're working on matters of this sort, uh, they work at danger to themselves, their own personal beings, and I want to say that we, uh, the state of Alabama, stands with them. Governor. Has any progress been made, Governor, do you know? Well, I haven't had time to talk about the, whether any progress has been made. I've just been expressing my deep concern and grave concern about uh, this particular matter. Why are you on the way to Washington, Governor? Uh, I was on the way to Washington because uh, we, had an, uh, we had an engagement with uh, some executives and uh, one of the top uh, the army for coverage of events in Alabama because they had agreed and wanted to talk about that matter, and that was, about, that was my business. They may go to the scene. That's right. And I just want to again impress upon the, the people of this state and of this city uh, who might have any information about this. If you love your state, and if you want to help the governor of Alabama, if you want to help the city officials and the county officials clear up a situation that would endanger your life, uh, unless these matters are solved, you come forward like a man and give the information and, and uh, your identity will be kept secret and uh, I hope that the reward gets up over $100,000 uh, and whoever gives information that leads to the arrest and conviction will receive such a reward. Governor, Governor do you what are think your... if, uh, that, that $100,000 mm. will do what $80,000 already has not done? Uh, well, uh, let's get it above $100,000 then and I hope that that will do it. Governor, what are your fears if these... Uh... Point, I sure do. What are your fears if this is not solved? Well, uh, uh, let me say this. Uh, we think that any one bomb set any place is, uh, is, 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 as I said, a dastardly, infamous act. But of course, uh, you know, uh, bombs, uh, and this is no excuse for it, but if you're trying to get to the point that this uh, endangers uh, uh, everybody who happens to come to this state or in this state, let me say that uh, uh, Youngstown, Ohio, has had about 70 bombings, and that's no excuse for these. But, uh, and Chicago has been bombed uh, from heck to breakfast uh, for, for the last 35 or 40 years, and uh, uh, with everything from machine gun fire to everything else. So it's not going to mean that we're going to stop uh, progress and keep moving forward. It just means that Alabamians are law-abiding citizens, uh, whether some people think we are or not, and we, have, we are not used to this. We are not used to bombs, uh, in spite of the publicity given to the few bombings in Alabama uh, and the few attempts. Uh, we'd be, uh, you can compare that with other states in the Union, we way down the list. But we just don't like it, and we're not going to tolerate it. And we're going to use every agents and resource at our command to see that we can bring those to justice who are responsible. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Now that you've seen the damage, what do you think of this? Well, 
of course, I'm indignant about it, as I'm sure that uh, all the people of Alabama are. And uh, as I've said, these things happen in many parts of the country, and it's happened for years, but we're not used to all of this in our state, and we don't like it. We're indignant about it. And I hope the time comes that we can locate who has done such a thing as this, because they're going to get what's coming to them. And I hope that anyone who knows anything about this will come forward, and uh, we'll keep their identity secret and uh, let the law enforcement officials know about it. How would you characterize the people who did something like this? I characterize government? anyone who would do, who would set a bomb here or any place else, as someone who cares nothing about anybody in this state who is not on anybody's side in this state on any matter and who's not on, in, on the side of the people of this country. Somebody that's against everybody, against the, uh, against, against the country. They're, this kind of business is just fiendish. Ms. Melianico, this seemed like a very close call you had at your home. Will you tell me about it? Well, yes, my oh. father got up this morning. Just a moment. Let it start to Miss Mulyanico, this seemed like a rather close shave you had at your house this morning. Will you uh, tell me about it? Well, unfortunately, it was. My father got up as usual and um, went out to get the morning paper, noticed this box on the front uh, step, and he investigated it and thought first that it was a gift for the family and attempted to lift it, but he found the box was very heavy, and then he heard the clock ticking. And I guess just uh, involuntarily, he reached into the box and pulled out the clock and the mechanism, which of course he should have never done. How old a man is your father? My father, 79 years of age. What did he say then? Did, were you awake at the time? No, I was uh, asleep. He came into my bedroom and said, I believe there's a bomb on our front porch. And I rushed to the phone and called the police. And of course, he did not tell me that he had deactivated it by taking the clock out of the dynamite. But it was ticking. Oh, yes, it was ticking. It was still ticking when the police uh, picked it up. How big of a bomb was it? How many sticks? I think the police estimated 25 to 30 sticks. Do you have any idea of how soon it was set to go off? None at all. Had a bomb discovered at his house. That's and it after was mine. After yours. Uh -huh. uh, has the mayor and have you uh, and other members of the council received uh, threats of uh, this nature before? Well, so far as I know, I have received no threats in the last six months. Of course, when our new government went into office something like two years ago, all of us on the council received many phone calls and some threatening letters that our lives were in danger. But naturally, we had a duty to perform, and we did it to the best of our ability, paying no attention to these threats. And I'm sure that this uh, attempt at intimidation will have no more success than the threats in the past. I'm told you have sort of a record of moderation on the city council. Is that right, Miss? Well, I say that I do not believe in labels. I'm not an integrationist and I'm not a segregationist, but I am a realist. I know that we live in the 20th century and that all of us believe that every man must have justice and that there must be equal application of the law to all citizens. And this is what I stand for. And I believe that we should examine my record on each issue and not just attempt to uh, place a label on a person and uh, the word moderate, I don't know what it means when it refers to city streets or anything else. But I do believe in justice as far as all people are concerned. And responsibility. You are up for re-election this coming October. That's correct. Uh, are you going to run again? Well, this is a question I could not answer at this time. Why? Well, there's a great many demands made upon uh, people who run for city government, especially when it is supposed to be a part-time job, and ours has turned out to be almost a full-time uh, job, and I have a busy law practice, and it's just a question of how fair you can be to your government and to your clients. Well, Miss Milianico, do you think that these bombings and these threats are going to intimidate any members of the council? No, I think it's going to make us firmer in our resolve that whatever has to be done in the laws of our city to protect all people in this community will be done. Thank you. you can... Thank you, John. Please. Miss Milianico, you had a rather close shave at your house today. Would you tell me about it? Well, how old a man is your father? And what did he do? 
What did he say to you? Then what did you do? What was your reaction to all this? There was also a bomb found at the home of Mayor Boutwell. Have uh, you and other council members and the mayor received uh, threats before or any bombing? Take that one again. Has the mayor or yourself or any other council members received any uh, bomb threats or any threats of any kind before? Ms. Milianico, you have uh, what I'm told is a record of moderation on the city council. Uh, is this right? Do you suppose it's because of your record of moderation that this sort of thing happened? You're up for re-election uh, this October. Are you going to run again? Do you think that this sort of threat will intimidate you or any members of the council in any way? Do you think this sort of threat, this bombing, will intimidate you or any other members of the council? <coughs> children go to school this morning? No, in fact, they haven't registered my boys yet, but they are being registered in public school. They're being registered in public school? Yes, and may I say for the record, I have had offers of the most exclusive schools in the United States to take my children free. But I told them, no, I would prefer for them to go to public school with the rest of the children, and we are determined to win this battle here in New Orleans. Well, the public schools here are integrated. Uh, what difference does it make? Well, no, my boys are not in an integrated school. School. They're in high school, but the school board is going to hear me out, I believe, on the 24th or the 26th for the very first time, and I'm going to insist the school board appeals to the Supreme Court with a brief that I have already prepared, and if they don't, I will publicly acknowledge it now. I will run for school board and appeal it myself if I win. Mrs. Gayot, uh, aren't most of these people who are here today the same ones uh, who have been at most of these uh, integration uh, affairs here in New Orleans? No. To be perfectly honest with you, I recognize one, two, three, four, and I expect a crown because we told them to meet here at noon. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome.
with the niggas? Why should our children go with the niggas? Your mother wasn't raised with the niggas, but she didn't raise you with the niggas. Why are you doing all this? Why don't they teach the Bible the right way? God didn't teach the niggas with niggas. I said, they got it bigger than land years and years and years. Why are they bringing it all up now? Why you need more money? The niggas and the white. The kids can't do the white. Come on, get in. Show me what you're doing. Come on, get in. Oh, I don't care. I'm not trying. Come on, man. I can't get in. I can use it. I had hoped to have a... Mr. Oliver, are you glad they've arrested someone for this crime? I feel I am. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm a 14 years, I think. Have you thought about it a lot? Have you, have you thought about the fact that no one had been charged with blowing up this church so many years ago? Well, I've thought about it a lot. How do you feel about that? Well, I feel better now, as I told you, if they got the right man. I'd hate to go on the wrong man that didn't do it, but I'd love to see him get the man but that did it. Just, just tell me once again, are you glad they got somebody? That's right. I sure am. Why? Because we need to get somebody. The poor children were killed in this church. You were here on that day? I was here. What did the church look like after the bomb went off? Well, it looked a wreck on the inside. Did you see the victims? No, ma'am. Did you know the girls who were killed? No, every one of them. What sort of girls were they? So what kind of girls were they? They were nice girls in my book, for I knew. Did you ever teach any of them in Sunday school? No, um, I've never been a Sunday school teacher. Okay, just tell me once again how you feel that somebody's been arrested. Well, I feel good over it and knowing they finally will bring somebody to justice about it because a crime like that needs solving if they don't solve it. You know, that's the way I feel. Do you think it's about time something <laughs> happened? I, I sure do. It's been a long time. Okay, fine. Thank you. Today, there's no sign of the bombing at the 16th Street Church, except for a plaque which stands in memory of the four girls who were killed. For the most part, the parents of the victims refused to comment, but we did talk with Claude Wesley, father of Cynthia, one of the victims of the bombing. He refused to be photographed, but on tape, he told us, he had some sympathy for the accused. Morgan, in his office, uh, he's helping 100%. Has been with us. Uh, I've conferred with him on this since we started the investigation. But why didn't they initiate the investigation since it, since it happened in Birmingham, Alabama? Why well, he's, he's working just hand in hand with us on it. Uh, it's, I reckon you could, that's an unfair question. You could ask that about any case our office got in in any county. Uh, we're working together on the case. Okay, let's get back to uh, Mr. Chambliss. Are you concerned that he may get bombed and be out of jail? That's not, I don't ever get concerned about what courts do. We make our case, we're going to present our evidence, and then leave the decisions up to the jurors and the courts. Considering that 14 years have elapsed since the 16th Street bombing, do you think you can get enough witnesses who will recall what happens to convict Mr. Chambliss? Yeah. You know, Anytime you make a prediction on what a jury's going to do, you, uh, you, you're stepping on thin ice. Nobody knows what a jury's going to do. The uh, only thing I can say is we're going to, we got what we think is a good case. We're going to present it in court. We're not going to be commenting about it on television. But it happened 14 years ago. Is it possible to get people who can actually reconstruct what happened uh, uh, so you can have a good case? The thing I'd tell you to do is wait for the trial and come to the courthouse. Okay. If you do run for governor, will this bombing investigation help you? No, I don't think it'll help. You don't think it will help? No. Don't you think it would be good publicity that uh, you may be able to solve a case that nobody has solved before? No more than any of the other hundred cases I've solved and tried since I've been Attorney General. Some of them help, a lot of them hurt, but I just do them 
because it's my job to do it. What about the stolen charge that you're trying to destroy him and other white people for your political ambitions? Well, he, I'm not going to answer what that nut says. He's demented. He, he's sick. Uh, he, uh, I'll answer what he says in court, and we'll do it by evidence. Finally, will you seek the death penalty in the chamber, Chambliss case, and can you get it? Uh, no, we cannot get the death penalty, because the death penalty was done away with in 1972 for all crimes up to that time. So uh, the most the maximum you can get is life. I'm an officer of the court, and as uh, an honor, as an officer of the court who has respect for the uh, court, why well, I term, I came down and voluntarily surrendered. Did they call you and ask you to come in? Uh, no comment. Who signed your bond? Uh, uh, Mrs. Fields. Doctor Fields, why? Uh, yes. Sir. Now, what's the procedure? Are you a free man now until the hearing? Excuse me. Yes, sir. Get out of the room. I don't know. You have to ask my lawyer here, Mr. Cobb. But uh, you He's will one of my fight lawyers. extradition, right? Yes, sir. Is that right, Mr. Cobb? That Kyle? is correct. When will the hearing be, Mr. Cobb? It hasn't been set. He is not guilty. He's pleading not guilty, and we'll contend that. And the evidence at that time will show it. Why did you choose to represent him, Mr. Cobb? I'm an officer of the court. Mr. Stoner is a lawyer. He's an officer of the court. I have my feelings about his innocence and his guilt, or his guilt, and I feel that I have a duty to represent anyone at any time that they need a lawyer to defend their rights and to see that they get a fair and impartial trial, and we shall do that. Mr. Stone, are you ready to name the undercover FBI agent and the detective who you say told you to get somebody to kill Dr. Martin Luther King and to bomb the church? That uh, will be set forth in the writ that we shall file. One more coming. Uh, just as quick as we get it prepared at the know proper that time. When the hearing is going to be? No, I do not. Did they give you a date on when they by when that would be set? No, they have not. Mr. Stoner, could, there have been reports <clears throat> that you talk about uh, fearing going back to Alabama that you might be killed. Can you elucidate on that? Uh, what what is your feeling and and what do you feel about those who are now bringing this indictment against you these many years after the fact? Well, I think it's an illegal indictment. The statute of limitations is wrong. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm going to campaign against him uh, in his campaign for governor of Alabama. Do you have any indication that Governor Wallace will not honor his request to send the extradition papers to Governor Busby of Georgia? I have no idea uh, what will be done in that respect. Most, most governors do whatever is customary. Do you think you have a special friendship with Governor Wallace? Uh, I, I, I don't know Governor Wallace personally. I've met Governor Busby, but I don't know him uh, uh, otherwise. You got anything else you want to say to it? Well, uh, I'm innocent, and uh, the FBI has been persecuting me for years and years. They even uh, had a pimp uh, pour gasoline under my apartment door in Savannah back, I mean, in Atlanta back in March of 1953 and set fire to the place where I was living with a friend of mine. And uh, the FBI, the, the fire department in Atlanta arrested him the arsonist and uh, wanted to prosecute him, but the FBI used its influence so the grand jury at that time would not indict the arsonist. Why don't you name him now? Why wait? I, I think it would be more appropriate to do, do that in court in a legal proceeding. Why? That's, uh, Mr. Cobb thinks so and other attorneys uh, that I've consulted with think so. You said you might defend yourself. Now you've engaged an attorney. Why? I'm busy. I have a lot of things to do, and since uh, Mr. Cobb here is, is a first-class attorney, and uh, we'll have other first-class attorneys working with us, why well, I can go about my usual business. How much is this going to cost you? I, I don't know. Mr. Cobb? No comments. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call me. <laughs>
four years. In 1970. No, sir. You've been back out of the a few times since. <laughs> 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 